Hello. I just wanted to take a quick minute here and uh, multitask with you. I was doing something else, but I happened to think about a conversation we were having earlier on the microwave kiln group, and we were talking about mica powders. And in a separate thread, we were talking about iridescent glass. So I thought I would just show you how to make your own iridescent glass. Iridescent isn't really the right term to use because it's not going to be like the rainbow colors. But you can kind of um, fake it <laughs> and use several different colors of mica powders. Anyway, i got a piece of scrap glass here of a color that I'm not usually too keen on. i got a piece of uh, blue adventuring. It's not my favorite. It doesn't really have a nice shimmer like the green does. But I'm going to give it a little dusting here with some cheap hairspray. Just to give it a little bit of tack. And let that dry a little bit. Maybe while that's drying, I'm going to cut it up into a couple pieces so they fit in the microwave kiln. right again. So now they should be getting tacky. I've got these a whole set of colors that are tested for fusing. So I've got tons of mica powders. Most of them are basic art store ones. J card and other brands and some are even makeup ones, but these have already been tested to work for fusing. They're from um, Thompson Enamels, and it's a sampler set, so they're just a bunch of jars with a little bit in them, and it doesn't look like there's much there, but a little goes a long way with this stuff. So anyways, I want a, I want a soft paintbrush. I don't want one too big, because I'm going to work a little bit of powder at a time. This one feels pretty good. I don't have a soft, fluffy one up here. There's a soft, fluffy one, but it's too big. Uh, okay, anyway. Some of these colors are straight, straight colors, like there's gold, red, yellow. Some are what it's called interference colors. And that's where you get like this blue. There isn't very much in that jar because the interference colors are usually a little more expensive. And they kind of shift. They have a color shift to them. Where it's, it's going to look like maybe plain pearl. But when it, you turn it in the light, it's going to have a blue color to it. I'm just going to swirl a little bit on here. And with mica powders, more is not necessarily better. Because mica does not melt, fuse into the glass. It'll fuse onto the glass, but only exactly the particles that are touching the surface. Anything extra is going to wipe off. And it doesn't matter how much you put on there. It's not going to make it thicker or heavier. It's going to come off after it's fired. So you don't need much. All you need is a little, just a little bit, and spread it around. So this one here is number six orange. I'm going to mix that in around the blue. And that's where we're kind of faking the iridescence, You're adding different colors. I'm going to clean my brush off on another piece of glass. By using the different shades of mica powder, and this stuff is messy, <laughs> and this jar just happened to have some knocked around in the lid. So, 
I now have it all over me and all over everything else. I'm going to shake it off on another piece of glass. Since there's so much there, I'm not even going to, I spilled so much all over it, I'm not even going to try to add another color. I'm just going to smoosh this one around a little. And leave it as is. Now there is some extra powder on there. You can see some loose flakes and it'll brush off after firing. So I'm going to set this one aside, get it ready for the kiln, and I'm just going to use the small microwave kiln, so I'll only be doing one of these at a time, but it's okay, no big hurry. Okay, I still have a lot of gold here. And it's really all over everything, so I'm just going to finish mushing that around, bring it up to the corner here, try to clean off my brush a little bit, try a little bit of the green. This is an interference color too, 13 green. To look at it, it looks almost red, but when when the light shifts, it's uh, going to pick up green. It's kind of what I call a beetle green. You know, if you see an iridescent bug, it looks green, but when the light hits it, it flashes a little red. I'm just going to add a little bit of that and try to rub it on down through the gold. Maybe some of it will stick instead of all that gold. I don't know if you can see the different colors flashing in this or not, but because yeah, I know I got a crummy camera and it's probably out of focus, but one of these days I'll upgrade. Um, let's see now, what do we have? We got red. And this red looks looks pretty red. Stick some of that on there. Okay, I'll be back later after I get a chance to fire these. Now here's the purple. And see, that's one of the more natural pearl colors, which is usually the natural state of mica. And you don't see the color until it's spread out kind of thin. And it picks up the light and then it picks up kind of a lavender color. Barely purple, but let's see how it works out with this. Swirl some of that around there. And I'll be back eventually after we get these fired. I glow. And we'll see what happens. Okay, here's the first one out. I had to use the my real beat up old kiln because <laughs> the other ones had stuff cooling in them yet. There's how it looks just coming out. And let me get a piece of paper towel here. Get these out of the way. And you can see how much loose came off. I fired it just until it came to a glow all the way across. Uh, you can see the edges softened up a little bit, so it's probably like the equivalent of a tack fuse. Uh, this is on 
two millimeter glass. So it's, I was watching it like a hawk so it wouldn't all of a sudden zoop, take up on me. Oh, uh, I did pretty good with not putting too much on, I guess, because I'm not getting off a lot of waste. So what's left on there is what adhered to the glass. And it's, it's pretty. It's really pretty. And it really does mimic iridescent glass because of using the different colors. I'm not sure how well it's showing up in the camera there because I can't see. But down here... It looks real fine. Okay, just gonna pop in here real quick with the other two. All cooled in out of the kiln. There's this one with the mostly golden blue. I hope that this is showing up a little bit at least. We'll rub off the excess on this. And again, I did pretty good on this one, too, for not getting too much extra on there. There really isn't very much rubbing off. There's a little bit on the back side, too, from sitting in the loose powder. That one looks pretty good, too. And the third one, this one was mostly a the red and purple, I believe. Rub off the excess on that one. And again, very little extra came off. So we did good on that one too. And that one, this one I must have sat in more loose powder on the paper because this has a lot more on the back side. So yeah, conceivably you could do both sides, but since I'm usually only using one side of the glass at once, I only worry about the one side. But there you go. Three pieces of easy faux iridized glass. See you next time.